Well, hello there, and welcome to part five in our tutorial series here on Conva.js. In part five, we're going to talk about custom animation. Now, in part four, we talked about tween animation, and we learned that a tween animation was a smooth transition of some shape in our project from one state to another. In our last installment, we had a star which started on the left-hand side of the screen and traveled across to the right-hand side, no big whoop. Now, custom animation is different than tween animation in three main ways. First, a tween animation only animates a single element, okay? And if you have multiple elements, multiple shapes in your project, you just and you want to animate them all, then you just have to create multiple tweens. There's no getting around that. Custom animation can animate multiple shapes all at once, no big deal. The second difference is that the tween animation had a set duration, okay? So you know exactly how long it was going to take to make that transition. A custom animation has no duration. It just keeps going, keeps animating until uh, you stop it programmatically or until the, the app closes. And finally, a tween animation had a set destination, okay? You knew exactly where you were heading. You knew what the end state of that animation, tween animation, looked like. A custom animation, instead, has a, f a function that gets called once every frame, and we calculate dynamically how things are going to change. We don't necessarily know at the beginning of the custom animation how things are going to look at the end. Okay, It's done, it's, ca it's uh, calculated dynamically. You'll see what I mean here as we get into it. Now, uh, you can get just as deep as you want into this custom animation stuff. In fact, it deserves, I suppose, its own series in itself, and I don't want to make that, at least not now. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take that tween we had from the previous uh, video, and we're going to recreate that using a custom animation, okay? It's going to be a little more code, but it's going to be quite a bit more flexible. So if that sounds good to you, let's get into it. So here is our setup here. We have a stage at the top, of course, with height, width, and container properties on it. We're creating a single layer, and we're adding that to our stage as normal. And we're creating the star here with the properties you see. Just to shake things up, I've made it orange instead of yellow because I like to live on the edge. All right. Just, just roll with it. So here's how you create a custom animation. Okay, here we go. We're creating a new canva.animation here, and we're saving that in a variable, okay, so that we can start it. Now notice that we're passing in two parameters here, a function name and a layer name. This function is going to get called automatically once we start the animation on each frame, obviously. It's called each frame after all. And we're also passing in the layer so that Canva knows which layer it is to refresh or redraw, okay? Now, in this frame, uh, in this function, rather, we're not actually going to animate anything for the moment. We're just going to log something out to make sure it works. And just as in the tween, with the tween animations, we had to call tween.play. Here we say anim.start. And when we do that, we get the thing logged out to the console and everybody's happy. Okay, great. Okay, so instead of logging something out to the screen, uh, or to the console rather, let's change that x value as follows. Okay, now if we've done this right, we're creating a new x value, which is the current or previous star x value, and we're just adding one to it, and then we're uh, setting the new star x value to this using the syntax, which you saw a couple of uh, videos ago. If we save and refresh, all right, it's moving across the screen. Very nice. And it's rolling right off the edge of the screen, as you can see. All right, we can fix that later. Uh, just as an aside regarding the speed, I'm on an M1 MacBook Pro, uh, which has the ProMotion display, meaning a very, very fast refresh rate. You guys may not have a refresh rate so high, so your star may look like it's going slower, but that's perfectly fine. The point is it should be moving somewhat. And if it's not, you can play with the numbers, the plus one, change it to plus five or whatever you need to do. Okay, but there is a problem here. We're moving at a constant rate of one extra pixel per frame, and those frames, are, in, in my case, are coming thick and fast. But, you know, it, we don't want to have it run slower on some systems and faster on others, right? We want a constant rate. Turns out that we need to find out how many milliseconds have actually elapsed between each calling of the each frame function. Now, if you watched my other video, previous video, uh, where we built a stopwatch, okay, not using Canva, just using HTML, uh, you may remember uh, that we had two variables, T1 and T2, and T1 held the, the, the time in milliseconds of the previous frame, and T2 was the current frame, and so forth and so on. 
turns out that Kanva comes to our rescue here because, unbeknownst to us, Kanva has all this time been passing in a little object here into the each frame function, which gets called every frame, of course. And I'm going to call it frame. And this has inside it, okay, something called, okay, frame dot time difference, okay. And this is the number of milliseconds, okay, which have passed since the last time the frame was called. So now we need to come up here, my friends, and decide the rate, okay? We're going to say uh, pixels per second and set that equal, let's say 20 pixels per second. I don't know if that's too fast or too slow. Let's see what happens. Frame dot time difference times PPS. However, we need to divide that by a thousand, okay? So if we've done that right, save and refresh, okay. Now it looks like it's moving 20 pixels per second. I don't know if that's right or not. Let's say 50, okay. One, two, yeah, okay, I'm on a, on a um, it should take 10 seconds to travel across. I think we have a 500 pixel wide uh, stage here, canvas here, okay, great. So yeah, let's say that that works. There is a problem here though, isn't it? The star, isn't there? Uh, the star just slid right off the edge of the canvas, didn't it? And we don't want that, right? Okay, because we're trying to recreate pretty closely the tween we did. So now we need to test for whether we've gone off the edge or not, or hit the edge or not. How do we do that? First, I'm going to, uh, because we're going to be changing new x, we need to say let new x, okay? And here, down in here then, we'll say if new x, in the event that new x, okay, is greater than the width of the stage minus the stars, oops, stars outer radius. In that case, what do we want to do? We want to set new x equal to stage dot width minus the stars outer radius. Here we are. Okay, so it doesn't go over that. And finally, we need to stop that animation, which we can do with this syntax here, anim.stop. Do that, save and refresh. And you know what? I'm really gonna beef that up. Hold on, let's do 200. There we go. Now it's booking across the stage. Okay, here we go. And it stops just as it should. Stops just as it should. Okay, very nice. Notice that when we call this anim.stop business here, this does not return from the function, meaning that the star.x and the, the setting of this, the new value of star's x property here is called on the last time, but the, each frame is not called again thereafter. Okay, so now my friends, as a final little present for you here, let's 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 spice things up a little bit. This time, let's say that when we hit that when we hit that right hand edge, okay, we don't want to just hit it and stop. We want to hit it and sort of bounce back. How's that? Well, that involves sort of a direction, doesn't it? Whether we're moving in a positive x or a negative x direction. So let's come up here, and we're going to say let direction and set that equal to one to begin with. Okay, so here we are, and we're just going to multiply that difference here, the new x, okay, or the PPS in here, and we're going to multiply that times the direction. Now, of course, when direction is 1, as it is, as it's going to start out as, that's positive 1, and anything times 1 is itself, and that's the mathematical uh, prop property of multiplying by 1, and you don't change anything. I forget what that's called. There's some name for that property. I'm not a math guy. Don't ask me. And now, what we want to do in here is not anim.stop. We don't want to stop that. We want to say direction and we're going to toggle here we are toggle its plus minusness that's not the right word but if it's plus multiply by my negative one take make it negative one otherwise if it is negative one it'll be positive one blah 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 and if we've done that correctly here we are all right it bounces and we have another problem because now it goes off the left edge and here it goes again there we go and okay, that's all well and good. We could stop it at the left edge as well by calculating out whether the, um, you know, the new x property is less than the star dot outer radius. These things are like boulders rolling around in my head. Can you tell? Yeah. Do you, are you with me on this? Okay. I apologize. I'm not a math guy. Okay. Uh, if you want to do that, I leave that to you. But the point is that I think you have an overview now of what's involved in custom animation. A little more work than uh, the tween was to be sure, but quite useful and uh, quite very, very powerful. And uh, I hope that's okay. Let me know if you have any questions. I do read all of the comments such as they are. Once about once a month, I get a comment on these videos. And uh, thank you for watching. In the next video, we're going to talk about 
uh, optimizing for performance. So be sure to come back for that. And I look forward to seeing you. Okay, thanks for watching.